Welcome back to the Gupta YouTube channel. Today I am like to show you more things about Team Developer 6.2 and its .NET features. I'm going to show you how to create and deploy 64-bit .NET applications, how to use the new 360-degree .NET debugging features, how to define and throw custom exceptions, and how to pass exceptions from .NET applications to Win32 applications. So now here I have a little sample application that shows a grid that has been populated from a database. And this sample application, let me show you the build settings of this one. It's a .NET application and you see there's a new advanced button in Team Developer 6.2 that allows you to see the advanced build settings here. And what, what you see here, it's being set to a 32-bit target currently. It can also be set to a 64-bit or automatic. Automatic decides at runtime at, at what bitness the application will run. So let's leave this at 32-bit for the moment and run this application in uh, debug mode. It will bring up the application window. And here's the application. It has loaded the data from the database. And now let's switch to the Windows or Microsoft Process Explorer and see what bitness this application has. And you can see here it's a 32-bit application um, running here. Now let's change the project build settings to for this application to be a 64-bit application. 64-bit, OK, OK. And now project build this exe file. It exists, save the application. Now the IL is being compiled. The build was successful. And now let's run this build from uh, Explorer here. This is the grid state exe here. And it's basically the exact same application, just now being a 64-bit application. Let's have a look at Process Explorer. And there you can see grid state.exe now is a true 64-bit application. So now I'm using a 64-bit application that actually accesses a SQL-based 64-bit server. So where is SQL-based? Here, 64-bit Gupta SQL-based and the SQL-based GUI in 64-bit. So an end-to-end 64-bit .NET application is, is what you are seeing here on the screen now. Now let's have a look at Team Developer 6.2's new debugging capabilities. My next sample application actually is a Team Developer application that calls a DLL or assembly that has been written in uh, C Sharp. Let me open this Team Developer application here. And in that Team Developer application, you basically see that there is a concatenate button and several data fields. In that um, application, if you look into the um, global declarations and libraries, you see there's a simple file include simple.net assembly. So basically, I've included a .NET assembly here that is being called. And that .NET assembly, if you look into the um, external assemblies here, then you have a class and that class has several members, like, for example, the um, method concatenate my string or sum. Concatenate my string basically concatenates two input strings and returns the uh, concatenated string to the uh, calling application. And exactly that's what ha what's happening when I click here on that um, push button. Um, I basically set df3 data field 3 equals my.net class dot concatenate my string and input variables are the data field one and data field two. And now let me set to debug this, um, let me set a breakpoint here exactly at this position. And now let's go into uh, debug mode. And you will be surprised to see what happens here. Compiling the application, uh, TD 6.2 is going into debug mode now and will allow me to debug this application. So my data field 
my data fields contain uh, text, text part one, text part two. This is data field one, this is data field two, and here's data field three. Now, if I press the concatenate button, it will actually run into the breakpoint that I've defined, I hope. And that's the case. You see that now TD has stopped at this breakpoint, and I can um, step into that method now. And you see TD does open the C sharp code of that application or of that library. And now using uh, step into, I can step, actually step through the C sharp code here. And you see that there is a, a method which is called concatenate my string. And that basically returns X plus Y, which is the C sharp um, syntax for concatenating a string. So basically I'm stepping through C sharp code here from within the team developer application and uh, continue to step and you will always see the position in the uh, source code window that opens. And now I've stepped out of this and I just can continue the application and you see that the .NET class that I've written C in C sharp works fine and I could debug that with team developer 6.2. Another powerful new debugging feature for .NET applications on in Team Developer 6.2 is the ability to debug .NET web services. Let me show you how that works. Let me first show you my little testing environment here. I do have a um, Internet Explorer window open that has already loaded the test interface for my web service. So I have several web services deployed on my machine here already. And for example, this message here in outstring, I can simply test from a browser and this web service will basically return the string that I will input here. Hello team developer 6.2. Now if I call this web service by pressing this button, Internet Explorer will open a new tab with the XML results that are coming back from the web service. And it's coming back, hello team developer 6.2, exactly the um, a string that I have uh, passed into the web service. So now let's see how we can debug the backend functionality of this. To do um, web service debugging, you actually need to run C Team Developer in um, admin mode. So run as administrator. That's important to be able to attach to the um, web service process because the web service process are not running. Um, under the current user, they are using a, a system account, basically, of Windows. So now, let me open from Team Developer, let me open um, the application, this one here, server 61 test web services.app. And you can see in that application, I have class definitions. These class definitions basically contain the web services that I'm using. And there are operations like in and out for all the data types to test that. And the one I'm interested in is this, this one here, in out string. And this in out string basically takes a string as input and returns a uh, string as output. Parameters is a string and returns a string. And the only thing it does, it actually returns the string that is being passed into it. But let me set a breakpoint at this position here now. And let's go back to the uh, browser window. Now let's try this again here. Oh, you know what? I forgot to actually attach to the web service. And I have to do that from the TD debug menu, attach to web service. That was successful. And now go back to the browser here and try this web service again. And now you see that web service is not returning immediately. And in team developer, you can see that in debug mode, it did stop at my breakpoint. And now I can use, so now use the team developer tools to track what's going on there. With variables, for example, I now want to see what the contents of that string are. Here, in out string, add, and you see, That string contains hello team developer 6.2. So I'm currently debugging this 
live web service that is being deployed to my local machine. And now if I press continue here, then in my browser interface, the string is coming back as if nothing has happened. So powerful .NET web service debugging in Team Developer 6.2. Another powerful Team Developer 6.2.NET feature is the ability to define your own exceptions and throw your own exceptions. Let me show you how that works. Starting Team Developer 6.2 with a sample application. Now if you go to Global Declarations, there's a new outline item called Named Exceptions. If you double click on that, then you can define your own exceptions. You give your exceptions a name like this one here, e terrible things have happened, for example. Then you can enter a description. And an exception has variables. One string variable is absolutely required by default as part of .NET. That's this one here, string as message. But you can add more parameters or more string messages that you want to add to an exception to give your users more information when exceptions occur. So now that I have defined an exception, let me show you how to use those and how to throw those. So I have two push buttons here. This first push button, when clicked, will throw the exception that I have defined. Throw is a new keyword in the team developer language. And you throw the exception name and then pass in the strings um, that you want to pass to that exception. Like um, the first string, terrible things have happened. The second part, no idea what the primary key is. Now this one is basically an unhandled exception that is going to be thrown. Um, let me show you the sample here. Compile this and execute it. And run the .NET application. So this is throw user defined exception unhandled. This was basically a throw a .NET exception that will be then handled by .NET itself and it will open a .NET window to um, display the error message. Now the second button is the interesting one here and that's where, where all the hand message, uh, this um, exception handling comes in. I have added a when exception code here um, and I'm querying if last exception is e terrible things have happened, then I'm getting the last exception and I'm getting the additional exception text with using this method here, so I'll get last exception field. And then I'm building a message box using the strings that come back from the uh, message, from the exception. And you see, when exception handling, and after that I'm throwing the exception again, and in this case I'm completely handling that exception on my own. Let me show you how that works. Throw user exception handled. And this opens a dialog box. The title is Terrible Things Have Happened, which was the first parameter of the exception. And the additional message is, but we took care of them. So see, that's the second parameter that we um, passed into the exception. So this is how you can define and throw your own exception in teamdeveloper6.2.net. So now let's talk a bit about receiving .NET exceptions from the calling Win32 application. So what I have here is a team developer Win32 application that is actually calling a class in a .NET assembly here in that error-prone lib.dll. And basically that error-prone lib.dll contains a method that throws a .NET exception. And we will see how that .NET exception will get passed to the calling Win32 application. Let me open the application here. Team Developer 6.2 comes up. And here is the um, source code of the application. You see I'm including a, an APL, error-prone error pro, lib.apl, which is the definition for the um, .NET class. And then in that application here, in that form window <clears throat> that I'm using, um, actually there is a push button. And this one push button <clears throat> calls uh, the method in the external um, .NET assembly. And that call is named don't call this. 
And this will basically trigger an exception on the .NET side of things. And then we will receive that exception in Win32. And, and here's how that works. In Win32, you have that um, <clears throat> message on some net exception. And if an, a net exception occurs, then we are opening a message box. We get the last error from the object and display that error in uh, the message box. So let's see how that works. Actually, very, very simple. So this is the big scary button that will invoke a .NET method. And you see that Sam net exception, here's your pain. That's the tagline that we have defined in the source code here. So basically what you see is the .NET exception um, text here coming through. And you see I'm using a German um, uh, .NET version. So the German uh, .NET error exception text is coming through here in that Win32 application. Thank you for watching this Team Developer 6.2 video. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel to get notifications on any new Team Developer video we are posting to you. Thanks again and goodbye.